So hello, hopefully the levels are okay. I'm going to do a quick run through. This is my uh, basics of intellectual property law in Canada. It's a presentation designed to give uh, business people the basics of intellectual property law. Um, it'll focus on Canadian law. And so um, intellectual property law is often most commonly known as copyright, trademark, and patent law. As I said, this webinar, probably about 15, 20 minutes, it's pretty quick, give you a good idea of what direction to look at, give you an overview of the, if you're looking at intellectual property from a business standpoint, it will give you a good idea of um, what the different protections are that your business might be able to take advantage of and how to take advantage of them, what it costs and the time frame, for example. My name is Jonathan messiano Crookston. I'm a partner of the law firm Goldman Hine LLP in Toronto on Bay Street, and uh, we handle a wide range of intellectual property filings and dispute, as well as commercial disputes, franchising, administrative tribunal work, etc. We actually do a wide range of, of, of law. So diving right into this webinar, an overview. What are the basics? This is what we're going to look at, the basics of intellectual property. We'll discuss what is intellectual property, the types of intellectual property, what it can do for you, for example, the rights, and the time, cost, and effort in obtaining uh, this protection. So the first question is, what is intellectual property? Uh, IP, intellectual property are also known as intangible property. It's often abbreviated as IP. Basically, they're knowledge assets, and that means that um, they're creations of the mind, and they um, they are, and as we'll see, uh, tend to be things that are um, without physical form, and they tend to be, um, I hesitate to use the word idea, but they're predicated on ideas. So when we get to the different kinds, we'll see that they cover different creations of the mind in different fields. Uh, each of them is a particular legislative protection. Each of them has its own history. They cover mental creations. And each of the different areas, so patent, trademark, and copyright, protect different kinds of things. And the protections were developed for different reasons. Now, this webinar won't discuss the various reasons. Uh, that would be a much longer exposition on the topic. Um, but when we get to the different protections, we'll see that, that they actually vary quite widely in what they protect. That actually is one of the reasons I run this webinar, is I get so many questions where people are asking me, um, how can I patent my artistic work? And I tell them, well, that's, that's more copyright. Or how can, I, how can I copyright my logo? And now you can actually copyright a logo, but what people are often looking for is actually a trademark. And so I figured, you know, as a bit of a public service, I would run these webinars and just try to explain the kinds of protection so that uh, people didn't have to, um, you know, Wikipedia the information, and then often they get American information, and it, it's not necessarily correct for Canada. So the types of intellectual property, there's three main types that we'll talk about today. Uh, the first is copyright, which covers artistic works. The second is patent for inventions, and the third is trademark, uh, trademark intellectual property law, or trademark law, uh, which protects any distinctive um, presentation, any distinctive mark used to present goods in the marketplace, uh, and that indicates source or quality of one trader from another. Now, there are other kinds of intellectual property that are beyond the scope of this presentation, for example, industrial design, which covers the aesthetic design of articles and which actually is quite uh, useful for people who make um, aesthetically pleasing functional objects. These plant breeders rights a very technical area for uh, artificially bred kinds of plants. Integrated circuit topologies cover integrated circuits. Trade seekers are a kind of intellectual property in that they protect creations of the mind, the knowledge assets that are kept as a trade secret, 
they're not uh, legislated, so they're not statutory in nature. And they're sort of um, difficult to um, adequately police, but some people consider them a type of intellectual property. And because they're so closely related to the other types, I usually do list them when I list the types of intellectual property. Uh, domain names, question mark. They are um, contractual rights to a domain name, but often people think, well, they're intangible, can't actually pick one up. Uh, so they're similar to intellectual property in that they're intangible and they're dissimilar in that they're not really creations of the mind, although the word used can be considered a creation. And um, there are other rights, database rights, sound recording rights, and the list goes on. I won't be talking about those today. Just be doing a quick run through of the three main types of intellectual property. And the first type is copyright law or copyrights. Copyrights subsist in any original fixed work. Original means, as it says, original. Fixed means has to be um, written down, is fixed. It, it's difficult to. Um, once it's written down, there's proof to the world that the copyrighted work has been created. So often copyright law will speak of the work being fixed as a prerequisite to getting copyright law. So original, fixed, and work. Well, what's a work? Work is defined in the Canadian law as artistic, literary, dramatic, or musical works. So basically it's any artistic creation. A book would be a literary work, a uh, theater production, uh, the screenplay would be dramatic work, music, musical work. Now, copyright arises automatically, and there's no need to register, and there's no need to mark the actual item. Often, people will mark their book. They will say copyright, and then the year. Uh, that's to give notice to the world that they do, in fact, assert a copyright over the book. However, there's no need to do so, at least in Canada and many other countries. There is no fee for copyright. Because it arises automatically by operation of law, you simply need to write your book down, and you now have a copyright in that book. And in Canada, a uh, copyright lasts 50 years plus the life of the author. It's a bit longer in America and differs from country to country. The second type of intellectual property is patent patents. Now, they cover novel, non-obvious, and useful inventions, often in the often in the industrial arts or in the, uh, uh, in the industrial arena, uh, but they don't necessarily have to. And business method patents, which are patents that cover just business processes, are becoming more prevalent. Uh, patents also must cover patentable subject matter. Now that means, for example, in Canada, we don't allow patenting of higher life forms. Uh, however, in, we do allow lower life forms. Um, and we do allow, there's a big debate on uh, recently about gene sequences. So no higher life forms, no calculations, and no pure patenting of skills. You have to register patents, which means you have to apply for them and go through a registration process where the trademarks office will point out what they think are the uh, objections to granting a patent, granting you a patent for the subject matter of your application. Um, you can expect that it takes three to five years from start to finish before the patent office, sometimes a lot longer. Um, if you really hurry, you might be able to do it in under three years, but it would be very difficult and more costly. And I say here you must argue, question mark, discuss with the patent office. So you file an application which discloses a novel, non-obvious, useful invention, and they will say we've run searches and we don't think that it's new. We think other people around the world have been doing your invention or we think that your invention is a mere obvious, um, it, it's obvious in light of what already exists in the world. And you might have a different view, and you would put forth your views. And if they eventually accept your point of view, then they will allow your patent. And if they uh, do not, they will maintain their objection. Your costs for US and Canadian filings, you're probably thinking 15,000 and up. That gives you a US patent and a Canadian patent. It should be pointed out that patents are national in scope, so a Canadian patent will protect uh, against, will allow you the exclusive right to make, use, sell, and import your patented invention here. And similarly in the US, uh, to protect against those things in the US, you'd need a US patent. 
patents last 20 years from the filing date. Uh, the next type of intellectual property is trademarks. That's any mark used or adapted to be used in commerce. And it basically the mark identifies your goods and services. Again, like patent, you have to register. The registration process takes about a year, year and a half. And again, you're arguing slash discussing with the trademarks office who might have objections that your mark is too similar to existing marks or possibly that it's clearly descriptive, which is not allowed pursuant to our Trademarks Act. Costs, you're usually looking at 1.5 to 4K. Start to finish, 4K would be a difficult trademark, one where there's lots of objections. 1.5, uh, 1,500, that is probably a quicker mark, very few office actions. And this is excluding oppositions, which is a process by which a third party can basically launch a mini trial to determine, uh, to basically block your trademark, to say that in their view, you do not have the rights to that trademark and it shouldn't be granted to you. you know, trademarks last 15 years, they're renewable forever and the law is changing. I don't have the exact date in my head. Um, at some point mid next year, I believe it's down to 10 years. So a summary chart, patents, they cover novel inventions, new useful unobvious inventions you need to apply. And you're probably looking at, and here I broke it out, sort of suggesting it might be 8,000 and up for Canadian, and for both Canadian and US, 15,000. And your duration, and that's just a file, not the whole prosecution. Entire prosecution, I would budget 20 to 30, um, but again, depends on the office action. So the more office actions, the more costly. And the patent lasts 20 years from filing date. Copyright covers artist, original artistic, dramatic, musical, literary works. Uh, you don't have to do anything and there's no cost unless you want a certificate of registration and then you can pay $50. They last the life of the author plus 50 years. Trademarks are marks used in commerce and trade. Uh, you have to apply just like a patent, $1,500 uh, 1, to $4,000, not including oppositions. And you're looking at 15 year protection, renewable forever. Now what can you do with this intellectual property when you get it? Well, if people infringe, you can sue them for damages. Uh, so for copyright, you can stop people from copying or translating your work. Trademarks, stop people from using that trademark or anything that's confusingly similar. And in patent, there's um, you can stop people from making, using, constructing, or selling your invention. You can apply for an injunction, which is a court order to stop doing something. Delivery up, which is uh, an order that somebody delivers all the infringing goods to you, usually for destruction or an accounting of profits, which is what it sounds like. Instead of damages, you actually say, instead of the damages, instead of suing for the damages I suffered because you infringed my rights, I want to recover from you all the profit you made from infringing my rights. There's tactical reasons you might want IP, pushes people out of market spaces, causes them to stay away from market areas. And there are other more advanced advantages, such as it proves that you own the intellectual property, so patents are more valuable on a balance sheet uh, as an asset than trade secret because they're more, uh, you can trade them, securitize them, uh, for example. They're more understood, they're more well understood. People understand if you have a patent what that means. Um, here I actually say assets, they can be securitized. So you can trade them, you can license them, you can securitize them, meaning you can borrow money against them. Getting IP can clear you for use. Uh, here I say Canada-wide or in other countries. And here I was thinking trademark, for example. If you get a trademark, uh, you have the right to use that mark in Canada. Now other people might be able to invalidate your mark, but while you're using the mark um, and, no one, and presumably your mark is, is relatively unique and that's the reason you got it, you have the right to use that mark in Canada. So that means uh, people won't have much of a complaint or have less of a complaint if you're using the trademark that you yourself registered. Uh, versus if you just use a mark, don't register it, sometimes what happens is you're not aware of other companies that are using a similar mark and they may send you cease and desist letters and say stop using something that's similar to what we're using. If you have a trademark, you minimize those sorts of disputes because you can point at the trademark registration, which generally um, you get into a little complicated area when there's trademarks versus unregistered marks, 
but um, it provides you an easier defense, let's say, against those kinds of claims. And here I say also protect defensively and or stop others from blocking you, especially in other countries. So what can happen is you have a great trademark and you have a trademark in Canada and the US, you move to Latin America and you find that somebody else has registered your mark. If you proactively go and get that mark, knowing that you're going to expand to South America, um, now all of a sudden you've gotten rid of that hurdle. Other more advanced advantages, trademarks can protect domain names, um, patents can be used on the for, for pharmaceutical area, PMNOC linkage regulations, and you can do license swaps or trades or if you end up in litigation with another party sometimes um, this is especially common in the patent realm uh, somebody sues you know especially with tech companies one sues another for patent infringement and the defendant counterclaims with their own patents and then they end up settling on out of court basis because each one has claims against the other so what to do next so we've gone through the kinds of IP that are out there well, determine if you need or want IP, and that's a business decision. And then I suggest people conduct an audit of what they have. And that's a systematic examination of your business assets and your knowledge assets. So what kind of IP do you generate? Where is it located? Who's the most relevant person who's taking care of it? And what you're trying to do is identify all the possible targets for IP. What is it that you create in the regular course of your business that you would want to turn into IP? And once you have that list, you're probably not going to file for all of it. You prioritize your targets. But unless you can afford everything, you're, you know, for example, IBM, you just want to file a thousand patents a year, you'll want to pick your best uh, intellectual property targets first. How do you do that? Well, there's a number of ways. Value to you, your most important uh, uh, product might be protectable by a patent. So you might say, I'm going to file that first objectively you might say here's a patent that I think would be worth the most to other people um, or you might file first on the basis that you can't file for something later so if you have a patent and for example uh, patents need to be filed you can't have a disclosure of your patented invention before you file um, in Canada we have a one-year grace period possibly your one year is running out in a week so you say I'm going to file for that patent even though it's not the most important patent I have because after that week, I won't be able to file for it anymore. And then just get started. Get filing. Uh, if you don't start, then you don't get anything. And final thoughts, the patent, copyright, trademark process, especially copyright, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, I say see a lawyer or an agent because so many people file uh, their own filings. It can be done, don't get me wrong. Um, some people have great success even with the trademarks. But what you tend to find is that you can't fix problems once you're in the process. And so getting a good start is often crucial. Trademarks, at least, you can file again. Patents, you can't. So if a patent is screwed up, it may be lost forever. So I always tell people, go and see a patent agent for sure. Trademarks, <clears throat> all you'll lose is time and money. You can always file a second trademark. You may find that a competitor has slipped in ahead of you, um, but you can always make a second filing and I always tell people even if you have a budget for this um, process of, of filing for IP just tell the lawyer or the agent because often you'd be surprised people can work within budgets um, it, I say negotiable and the other thing that they can do is they can say if you have a strict budget you know I can do X amount of work it's almost like um, really lawyers and agents are just particular consultants and um, if you have something that to your business is worth a certain amount of money and you've budgeted that money, if you, if you ask a consultant to help you within that budget, they're often happy to do so. Uh, at least I say get preliminary advice because you can't sometimes fix the errors later. So uh, just another reminder, questions um, anyone can post on the event page if they want. Uh, they ask by email in the meetup group. And uh, my name again is Jonathan Messiano Crookston. Uh, 416, by the way, number is there, my email is there. If anybody has any questions, they can also give me a ring or, or shoot me an email. Otherwise, that's the basics of IP, and I thank you for watching. Great. Good night.